Hey y'all, welcome to my channel, welcome to this video. Today I'm just going to keep a, I'm not keep, but uh, give you a brief overview or description of Snowflake, Databricks, and Azure Synapse. I mean, which as far as, far as which one is the better one of between the three. Some people say that Snowflake is by far the best one out there. I mean, there's of course AWS Redshift, and I'm going to get down to a different story as well. But there's the Databricks, so like the main competitors they're saying with uh, Snow Snowflake is Redshift. But of course now Azure Synapse coming out on board as well too. It's becoming a much major player as well to this point as well too. Um, now Snowflake, it's a cloud-based uh, data warehouse uh, known for its scalability and ease of use. It allows users to quickly and easily store and query large amounts of data. Uh, it works on the aspect of like, you know, the data stored in, let's say in AWS in this case, I'm going to use AWS for Snowflake, throwing into an S3 bucket and the files themselves are basically stored in a, par in a Parquet format that is sort of their slightly altered version of Parquet that is easily readable from that aspect. But it's still table-based at that point where you can run queries against that. Whereas now Databricks, it's a cloud-based platform for, you know, like a little bit more for data engineering, machine learning, and analytics. But it, it's built on top of, mostly on, on top of Apache Spark. And so it provides a sort of collaborative web-based environment for like data scientists and engineers to work with very large uh, scale, scale data. Um, now, Azure Synapse is a fully managed analytic service that brings together big data and data arousing. Basically, it allows users to analyze data with Azure SQL. Similar to what you know, what Snowflake is, so it's the best of you know Snowflake and Databricks, where it kind of has your SQL aspect, the Spark, and a little bit of other services as well to like notebooks that you can put into play as well too. Um, some of the you know like each one of its each one of them has like its own advantages and disadvantages. Like Snowflake is great for uh, quickly and easily storing and querying large amounts of data, but it may not be as flexible as Databricks or Synapse. Uh, Databricks is a powerful platform for data engineering and machine learning, of course, but it has more complex to set up and it's definitely more complex than Snowflake to be quantized. And you also have to know a little bit of Spark to do that. Whereas Synapse, it, it allows you to, you know, analyze large data with their, you know, with Azure SQL and or, and or Spark. Um, but one of the other big differences is it's baked into Azure at that point, whereas Snowflake at least can work in all of the three uh, cloud providers. Uh, same thing with Databricks as well too. They can run in the all three data, uh, cloud providers at that point as well too. Um, now, which one should you choose? It's a matter of opinion at that point. Um, so one of the advantages of Snowflake, of course, is like its scalability. Snowflake is designed to handle large amounts of data and can easily scale up or um, scale down to meet the needs of the organization, like a warehousing environment. You know, they call it what warehouses basically. Uh, Snowflake has this sort of unique architecture and it separates the storage and computing, which allows you to like basically query the data. It's almost like an MPP architecture on a storage environment, basically. So like they can have one single storage, but you just build out an MPP architecture against it, basically. Uh, of course, again, multi-cloud support. It can run on multiple platforms, uh, AWS, Azure, and GCP. Uh, so you could choose which one are the best. And then, you know, if you have to migrate the data from one cloud platform to the other, it's just migrating the data. And that's pretty much it. Uh, Snowflake is definitely easier to use. It's like user friendly, has a user friendly interface, uh, and it makes it easy for non-technical users to work with the data. Uh, sec security wise, now Snowflake definitely owns uh, offers a wide range of security features, including encryption, access controls, and data auditing. Now, one of the disadvantages of Snowflake is cost. It can be more cost effective than the traditional warehouse, but it can be more expensive than other cloud-based storage data solutions. I mean, I mean, it, it's you're building your own data lake within Snowflake. And you're building it off and you're still having to pay for that on top of, you know, your storage environment within the cloud as well, too. Definitely limited customization where the, it's built around, you know, a, you know, the architecture is built around a single shared data model and can make it more difficult to customize for specific use cases. Uh, data types is definitely a big thing as well, too. It's, it's very limited to that point. It doesn't it has, you know, certain native data types uh, for like, you know, JSON or semi-structured, but it's, you know, other types of data it doesn't really support. I mean, now it supports VCF, which is a form of genomic data sequencing data format that they have in place. Uh, and of course, there's not a hell of a lot of integration with other tools, uh, like with other analytics tool sets. I mean, it's like in the, on their cloud form, on the cloud platform that you're at as well too. Uh, so, I mean, that's a, a, you know one of, that's Snowflake. Now, some of the advantages of Databricks basically. Uh, it's built on, you know, Apache Spark, of course. So, like, you know, Spark is a very powerful framework. 
if you know it well enough, and it uh, handles very large amounts of data effective, efficiently, basically. Uh, Databricks is collaborative, basically. It does where, sort of, you know, provide a web-based environment for data scientists and, you know, like engineers to work together on data products. Think about like notebooks, basically, more than anything else. And it's like, it allows teams to easily share code and data and insights very easily. And like, you know, the mach machine learning and analytics capabilities, uh, it includes a wide range of machine learning and analytics tools. Uh, it allows you to easily build and deploy models for data processing analysis, uh, as well as, you know, the fact it's a cloud lab, cloud-based platform. I mean, it's, uh, it allows you to easily scale or down to the meet needs of organizations and essentially like eliminates the need for expensive hardware. I mean, you can run Spark on your on-prem, but Databricks can run on-prem, but in reality, you're really running Spark more than anything else to be quite honest. And of course, Databricks does run on multi-cloud platforms as well too, just like Snowflake, it does run on GCP, AWS, and of course, Azure as well too. What are the, some of the disadvantages, of course, is like, it can be complex to set up. And I'll, I'll tell you right there, it's very, very, if you're technical enough, you can get away with it, but you have to read the documents to just basically understand it. And of course, um, it can be cost effective for like a traditional warehousing solution, but it can be more expensive than other warehousing. Basically, you still pay for the storage at the same time and as well as the processing power for that matter. Uh, and of course, there's limited support for certain data types. Uh, and of course, integration with other tools is another big factor as well too.